Hey, everybody, welcome and uh, hope you are well and safe. Uh, we're just chatting here in the Zoom room about uh, the state of our earth and uh, the air and the fires and hope you're all uh, staying safe and awareness of those that have lost their homes and all of the animals and critters and many-legged and finned and feathered that have lost their homes in these fires. Um, so, <laughs> something happened recently where somebody said some very harsh and hurtful words to me. Um, said in like really an angry way with like very raised voice and um it was quite uh that doesn't happen to me too often so it's pretty shocking and uh I wish I'd had the skillfulness of a Buddha to um you know really just radiate Metta at that time, as a, in many suttas has happened. There's one teaching, I should have printed it beforehand, but uh, of like this raging, huge elephant uh, charging at the Buddha, and the Buddha chants the Metta Sutta, and it calms that um, dangerous animal. Uh, and <clears throat> there's, yeah, many stories like that. Um, thankfully I did just say I'm going to go now and hung up the the disconnected from the call and so that much I did skillfully I didn't uh, speak or act in in anger or or violence but uh <clears throat> It took me a while to, a day, to discharge that energy skillfully, you know, and thankfully pickleball helped a lot. <laughs> totally hooked on pickleball now. And uh, yeah, um, just being really careful with my words and to not spread uh, anger, you know, even sharing it with other people that were offering support and stuff. I was just like trying to be careful. Um, but I was, you know, really could feel I was activated and and uh, defensive and protective, protecting myself like, mm, yeah, and hurt. Um, so yeah, I did you know various things. So one of the things that uh, we were going to chat about in the Zoom before, but didn't get to because of my own chatting. But uh, around you know what are the things you use to reflect on that and really have it in your back pocket. What do you use to discharge to release um, really strong aversive or or energy? that could come out in unskillful speech or actions. Um, yeah, some for some folks it's dancing or running or being in nature, talking with a friend. Um, hot bath was part of my, my uh, strategy as well. Um, so to think about, you know, maybe reflect on a time that's happened or something like that, something activating has happened for you. It might be fear or anger or, um, yeah, any anything. Uh, what what are the ways that you um, bring the level of activation down so that you can then. Um, practice cultivating the skillful qualities uh, you know and maybe if you're further along in the path than I am that would be your first response just to meta right away um, for me it was like mm, I'll talk to you later and that was I'm pleased that I did that and um, and then today has really been uh, 
such a relief to be able to then cultivate metta and karuna. So loving kindness, friendliness, or goodwill and compassion and um, reflection on what causes and conditions were present um, for that person. Um, and ultimately equanimity uh, as well. So these are the four Brahma Viharas. It reminded me, I, I also really felt a sense of protection. These uh, metta in particular is described as, as many things, but uh, one of the characteristics of it is as a protection. And I could really feel that it was protecting my own heart, protecting my own yeah, being from unskillfulness to, who was it? it Guy Armstrong, a Dharma teacher, described metta like frozen concentrated orange juice that all the extra is squeezed out. <laughs> that you just fill, concentrate and fill the heart mind with goodwill, skillful uh, compassion, equanimity, joy, and that mm, kind of squeezes out the extra that might be unskillful. And so this really felt uh, like a protection, like a, I was feeling safe from harm and also that I was safe that I wasn't going to cause harm. So there are these two aspects to um, to the protective aspect of goodwill that um, really come into play, especially when other people are hurting you or being harmful. And also when you realize you've done something harmful or to protect yourself from doing something harmful. Uh, and it re it reminded me of this story. I, I I really it stands out in my memory from a young age. I think it might it might have been in one of my dad's books or something. I can't recall where I heard it or read it. So the version that I was able to find, um, I'll share with you. Uh, it's a Hasidic version, and so I don't know the roots of it, but this is the one I was able to find. It, it's a pretty old parable that I, I'm not sure the exact origins, but uh, maybe this is the origins. Um, so the, this one is um, tells the story of Reb Itzik, a poor Jew who lives just outside of Krakow. And he knows that he can't survive or provide for his family. Um, like things have been hard for a long time and the resources are scarce and um, things are really getting dire for the family. Uh, and so he, he really is feeling he needs some sort of divine intervention. There just isn't enough work or resources for them to survive. Um, and so he 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 has a dream one night of um this treasure of of gold or some sort of treasure and that it's buried at the foot of a bridge a bridge that leads to the king's palace and this dream is really vivid and clear and he knows exactly where it is um so after and then there's this very long and harrowing journey to um, get to this bridge. And when he gets to the bridge, he's, his plan is thwarted because there's a palace guard there, a soldier um, standing guard. And, you know, after this long journey and, you know, so much hope and oh, can, you can almost imagine, I don't know if you can, but maybe get some flavor of it. And, and so he explains to this soldier, you know, how 
how much it's needed and and his exasperation and hopelessness and he shares it with this soldier and the soldier says do you think you're unique do you think you're the only one who who dreams even i have such dreams he says in fact i too have had a dream of buried treasure it's uh, in my dream i can see it so clearly and it's beneath the wood burning stove of some poor jew named reb itzik who lives outside of krakow but do you think i'm crazy enough to go and do something about it reb itzik thanks him very much and promptly proceeds home to uncover the treasure so this story is about you know what is it we're wanting in life what do we think we don't have what is it that we need that we think we don't have and is our treasure you know right beneath our feet uh we 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 think it's out there over there when i get that then i'll be happy and um or whatever version it is then i'll be all the, all the things safe happy well peaceful um and what the possibility that we can find what we're looking for right where we are it's not just a possibility it's a truth we can find what we're looking for right where we are so you know if you really reflect on what it is you think you want you know do some uh, reflection or share it with somebody and and talk about it and see is it actually something that's that's attainable and possible within your own heart and mind um yeah i i mean i found that that's what stood out for me today in this day of feeling some ease and relief and safety uh that i was describing earlier um you know it, when i was triggered it felt like you know all the unskillful things i wanted unkind or like really more protective in a unskillful way and um you know wanting to have my case heard and wanting to Mm, clarify and fix and whatever and what i really wanted was just peace in internally um which i found uh and so this um and it's interesting that these uh what are called the brahma viharas are translated as mean the divine abodes the that it's right there in our own home our own heart body mind is this home or abode of safety of goodwill of resonant harmonic joy of compassion and equanimity and uh the, there's another sutta um which i'll link down down below that um from from the buddha a time of the what's called the rains retreat the three month retreat during the rainy season in india when the monks would um sit their long retreat their three month retreat in in the forest um when monsoons were happening or rainy season were happening and uh they were um given this forest to uh you know by whoever owned it a, a king probably uh to the story says 500 monks to live there for the three months and so they go into the forest and set up their places sitting at the foot of a tree um and the as the story goes the the unseen beings the forest devas um who lived there 
became quite upset and agitated that these monks weren't just passing through, they were setting up camp. And they were also fearful of these monks and didn't know them. And uh, so the forest devas start to make a lot of really frightening sounds and visions and um, odors. Very, It's described as being really uh, distasteful, strong smells. And so they, they, you know, just really hammered at them to try to scare them off. And it worked. Um, they, they couldn't concentrate. They couldn't meditate. They couldn't practice because they were just beset with uh, fearful images and thoughts and experiences. So they leave and they go to the Buddha and explain what's happened. And the Buddha says, go back, begin again. And they say, no, <laughs> we don't want to. It's too, we can't practice there. It's, we can't concentrate. We can't calm down, um, et cetera. Uh, and then the, the Buddha says this, um, dear monks, because you went there to practice meditation without a weapon of protection, you have encouraged many distractions and difficulties. This time, however, I will give you a true weapon of protection. And then at that time, the Buddha offers this metta teaching and practice, this loving kindness or goodwill cultivation as a protection. And they he teaches this practice to them. They go back and practice in this way, cultivating goodwill, cultivating um, wishes for their own safety and well-being and for that of the devas and for all beings. Um, and for a while, they continue to feel fear and anxiety, but eventually um, they keep practicing diligently, vigilantly, and uh, the devas start to respond and feel that loving kindness. Um, feelings of respect, welcome, and even reverence begin um, to affect the devas. And along with the sense of being connected, which is a very important point that it cultivates this sense of interconnection and awareness of other beings and what they're going through. Um, yeah, so uh, in our practice, I'll, um, I'll read that uh, sutta and then we'll practice uh, this divine abode, coming home to this sense of cultivating good wishes first for ourselves and um, hopefully feeling this sense of protection that comes from it, not a protection that's an aversive protection or a mm, putting up a wall against uh, people that um, feel whatever way to us, uh, but the protection of protecting our own hearts and minds from reactivity and unskillfulness. This is the real force of the protection. Um, yeah. And that it's the treasure is right beneath our feet. The treasure is right here in our own abode, in our own heart mind, which is what um, what that means. Yeah. So let's do that. Let's cultivate that. As, um, because if we don't practice it, it won't be there when we need it. <laughs> this is why we practice it, so that it becomes more of the natural response when push comes to shove, when, when things get hot. So practice. All right. So when we practice these uh, heart abode practices, it's very important that you set up your your body to be as comfortable as possible. So take a moment to adjust uh, anything in your space. If you need any other supports for sitting or you could practice laying down. This is a beautiful practice to do before sleep. Um, really cultivates uh, one of the, oh, do I have it handy? Yes. Um, I'll share. No, it's over here. It's over here. Here it is. 
Um, the this uh, the meta practice is also has um, a list of benefits of this practice. And uh, Sylvia Borstein describes this as like, if this was an advertisement for some product that was sold, being sold, we, if we believed it, we would definitely buy it and use it. So people who practice metta sleep peacefully, wake peacefully, and dream peaceful dreams. People who practice metta, people love them, and deities love them, and deities will protect them. Poisons, weapons, and fire don't harm them. People who practice metta, their faces are clear, their minds are serene, and people who practice metta die unconfused. And when they die, their rebirth is in heavenly realms. Or as I was telling my friends here on the Dharma recording beforehand, the, the heavenly realm of the library, <laughs> the Dharma library at BCBS. Okay, so these are um, some of the, the benefits of the practice. I had a student this morning say that when she first heard that list, few many years back now, um, in a retreat with me, and she was like kind of rolling her eyes, going, All right, that's a bit woo-woo, or that's not realistic, or you know, that's not true. And and after her years of practice, and that's her main practice, um, she doesn't doubt it anymore. Okay, <clears throat> so resting, supporting your body, inviting as much kindness and ease in your posture as possible. If the breathing is safe and comfortable for you at this time, see if taking some deeper breaths feels comforting or soothing, it might not. If you're feeling tightness um, or difficulty with breath, maybe just inviting some spaciousness around the body, spaciousness around the lungs. Feel into the space around the lungs, inviting some ease from any contraction. And from the Karaniya Metta Sutta, this is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech. humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied, unburdened with duties and frugal in their ways. P. 
peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, not proud and demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove. Wishing in gladness and in safety, may all beings be at ease. Wishing in gladness and in safety, may all beings be at ease. Whatever living beings there may be, whether they are weak or strong, omitting none, the great or the mighty, medium, short or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and those yet to be born. May all beings be at ease. Let none deceive another or despise any being in any state. Let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another. Even as a skillful parent or grandparent protects with their life, their child, their only child, so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings. radiating kindness over the entire world, spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depths, outwards and unbounded, Freed from hatred and ill will. Whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, one should sustain this recollection. This is said to be the sublime abiding. divine abode, by not holding to fixed views, the pure-hearted one having clarity of vision, being freed from all sense desires, is not born again into this world. So allow yourself to recall and feel your own intentions, your skillful, wise intentions. What are your root intentions of how you want to be in the world? Take a moment to reflect on that.
The Buddha also taught that there is no other person in the whole world that's more worthy of well-wishing than yourself. So we include ourselves. We begin with cultivating well-wishes with ourselves so that we can genuinely offer this to all beings. So you can either repeat these phrases in your own heart mind or adjust the words to whatever you can resonate with and begin growing this seed, the seed of awareness in your divine abode. The treasure is right here. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be well. And may I be at ease or peaceful. We'll take time to Pause after each phrase and really feel it in your body to whatever extent possible. May I feel protected and safe. May I feel contented and pleased. May I be well in body and mind. May my life unfold with ease and peace. And so if you can cultivate the feeling of this really flowing through your body, filling your body, perhaps with a sense of light or energy, We'll have a few minutes of silence here to repeat your own cultivation of wishes in relationship with yourself.
perhaps feeling this sense of inner wealth as if you've discovered the treasure that's right there in your own home, your own divine abode. And this sense of protection, protecting your own heart mind from being unskillful. And as we hopefully are feeling some peace and calm, wishing in gladness and in safety, may all beings be at ease. Whatever living beings there may be, whether they be weak or strong, omitting none. The great or the mighty, medium, short or small, seen and unseen. living near or far away, born or yet to be born, may all beings be at ease. This isn't a mental exercise. It's a heartfelt, radiant, all directions. Feel the space above you spreading upward to the skies. Radiating kindness. And downward to the depths. in front and behind, side to side and all the four quarters, unbounded.
May all beings everywhere be safe. From physical and mental, verbal and emotional harm. May all beings everywhere be peaceful. May all beings everywhere be well in body and mind. May all beings everywhere be free from dukkha, free from suffering. Be at ease. Really cultivate the felt experience of this inner protection of your own heart mind and this boundless wish for all beings.
May I, may you, and may all beings everywhere know the ending of Dukkha and be at ease. Thank you for practicing with us, and I hope you find some ease of heart, mind, and um, protection in being skillful going forward. Um, I'll put the link down below to the sutta, so you could read that Karaniya Metta Sutta for yourself, or print it and keep it nearby. and. Uh, really cultivate um, cultivate that treasure and uh, it, for those that are practicing with us um, on the YouTube channel in the next for next week and the week after there will be two guest teachers teaching while I'm away um, so um, look for those recordings I probably won't get the recordings up well, I might be able to, but it, I might not get the recording posted right away, but keep an eye out for them. Thank you.